I have a huge connection with Muir. Um, he was a model of mine at a very formative time in my life when I was an undergraduate at Berkeley. At a time when I was taking a sleeping bag up into the Berkeley Hills and sleeping as many nights of the week as I could because that was my preference, going up there myself. Taking uh, Jepson's original floor of California with me and studying the botany and just keying out plants up there. Here, like Muir, I was a botanist first. Um, he was a model to me as a naturalist. He was a model to me as a scientist. He was a model to me as a conservationist. My whole career has been conservation. And I would say he's really um, a spirit, a very important spiritual aspect that has transcended and, and come through to me. I was reading Muir in those early days because he was what talked to me. John Muir um, was an inspiration to me on a lot of different dimensions. Um, one was as a meticulous naturalist, as a scientist, and as a conservationist, but also as somebody who went alone into the wilderness. I mean, that was where I was headed, especially looking back, that's what was really interesting to me, it's what I wanted to do. And he was sort of the guiding light for me in those early days. Um, and, and also, back in, in those early days, I was so fascinated by how he lived in these mountains that I took a two-week trip when I was an undergraduate in which I went in these mountains without a sleeping bag for two weeks just to see what it was to live that way and to see what Muir did. I can't say I ever did that again, but I learned how to live in these mountains without a sleeping bag. And it's a nice survival skill to have if you ever need it. There is no substitute for spending a lot of time in the field and wearing out boots. It is the only way you're really going to understand an animal like this. The future of this animal is highly dependent on us expanding their geographic distribution. But the, the interesting thing is that the devastation of bighorn sheep in the Sierra was already occurring when Muir arrived at the Sierra, into the Sierra, because the domestic sheep grazing began in the 1860s. John Muir uh, spoke of, of bighorn sheep being safe up in the, the high mountains, and, and he was very wrong, unfortunately. That's why we have them as a dangerous species today. Um, and little did he know that the domestic sheep that he tended in his first year or so in the Sierra were the worst thing for the wild sheep. And it has to do with diseases they got, and that's what devastated our bighorn sheep. We still have threats from that. The biggest threat to bighorn sheep today in the Sierra right now is mountain lions, but also the threat of, of contact with domestic sheep up in the north. There are still some domestic sheep sufficiently close that we could have contact, and if we get contact, we potentially will have a complete pneumonia epizootic that'll take out a whole population. So that, those are the two threats, and those, by the way, are the two threats that were the reason for endangered listing. We needed the federal government to deal with both of those. I was the one who wrote most of the petition to get this to be an endangered species federally as well as at the state level. And sometimes you just do what you have to do.